Thank you, Chairperson. Good evening to everyone. I am standing before you with all mixed feelings. I am a proud disciple. I am a proud disciple of a Doyen, Professor Seishaya. I have traversed with him for the past six decades and I wish to continue the same in all his endeavours. See, the, my slides may be poor because of the 12th hour preparation. Kindly bear with me. My... See, Professor V. Seishaya, born on 10th March 1938 and brought up at Chennai, India, inspired his elder brother, Dr. V. Perumal, the director of drug control, Tamil Nadu. Seishaya enrolled himself in the study of medicine at Madras Medical College in 1957, which is the golden jubilee of that uh, college. Uh, Dr. Seishaya, a young medical graduate in 1962, joined the Army Medical Corps in response to the call of the nation and joined the Army Medical Corps in March 1963 when the country faced unexpected aggression by the neighbouring country, China. He was posted in Jammu and Kashmir where he served continuously for three years as captain and in 1965 he took part in the Indo-Pak War. In recognition of his service in the war, the war theatre, he was awarded Summer Seva Star 1965 and Sainya Seva Medal with Claps Himalayas. After returning from Army service, he joined the Tamil Nadu Medical Service in 1967. When he joined the Diabetology Department of uh, Madras Medical College, uh, he visited the Aberdeen Hospital at Scotland, where he uh, was seen the combined care given to the diabetic pregnant women. And this idea, when he returned to India, immediately he was put it into practice. With the guide and help of his guru, Professor Sam G. P. Moses, he started the Pregnancy Diabetic Services at the Institute of Obstetrics and Gynecology with the due uh, cooperation from the then director, F.S. Phillips. This is famously known as the fetoplacental unit. And this unit, uh, worked in many aspects of the gestational diabetes and it brought out number of study pa research papers. <coughs> so, uh, he was, uh, now I'll read out his honours, whatever he has got. He was honoured with a number of international and national awards in recognition of academic, clinical and research contributions and the Distinguished Member Award of the Association of Physicians of India, Master Teacher Award of Indian College of Physicians, Doctor of Science and Fellowship of Royal College of Physicians, Glasgow, Lifetime Achievement Award by Tamil Nadu Dr. MDR Medical University, Chennai, International Diabetic Federation honored uh, him with Lifetime Achievement Award, in IDF 2017 conference, distinguished professor of Tamil Nadu, Dr. MDR Medical University for his life and founder patron, Dr. Saishya Balaji Diabetic Care Center Research Institute in Chennai. And uh, top 10, summing up, he has introduced a single test procedure to diagnose a gestation diabetes mellitus, which has been widely used all over India and also the surrounding Asian countries, which is an economical and evidence-based test. And this guideline has been approved by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare Government of India in recognition of his contribution. His 10th birthday, 10th March, has been declared as the National Gestation Diabetes Awareness Day. Sir deserves a big clap of hand. And this has been actually approved by the other international organizations like DIPSI, FIGO, APA and FOXI. During his service, he was recognized as a teacher of par excellence, an astute clinician, academician, researcher, committed to the public health initiative and particularly women's welfare, a person with a deep interest in the health of fellow human beings and passion for the social commitment. 
During his service in Madras Medical College, he has started the postgraduate diploma course in the diabetology, which is the first of its kind in India. And like this, so many firsts he has got in his lifetime. And uh, recently, see, actually, by his continuous efforts on the research in GDM, I will certainly say that. So many term IUDs and fetal, fetal wastages are being prevented. All of you agree with me, I suppose. <coughs> uh, if he takes up a mission, he will not rest till it is successfully finished. That is the nature of Professor Sheshaya, my god brother. The proud moment of Vatmanshri Award uh, picture is coming later, I think. Ah, yes, this is the proud moment where he was getting awarded the Vatmanshri Award. And when he received the award, we all felt that we are receiving the Vatmanshri Award. This is the picture. After his award, he has been called for interview at Bombay, where Amitabh Bachchan has interviewed all Padmasri awards are seen in the picture along with Amitabh Bachchan. And this is the occasion. Recently, the Tamil Nadu guidelines for gestational diabetes has been released in the Director of Public Health in the presence of by Minister, Health Minister Ma Subramaniam. And uh, for sir, and we are all there as expert committee during the release of the guidelines. Recently, uh, he was not keeping quiet. He started a foundation called Academic Research Foundation uh, for Metabolism. Research, correct? Yes, Metabolism. And uh, so it is mainly meant for to encourage the youngsters to do the research work. And he has decided to give financial assistance also. That is, this foundation is being created by the uh, disciples of uh, Professor Saishaya and being guided by him. So actually, I, I take this opportunity to uh, address you people to become member of this foundation. You can become a member by paying 10,000 rupees or you can become a patron when you pay 1 lakh or you can become a donor with any amount. So that, you know, we will continue the research work in diabetes and we can give because the money is the problem for the research work uh, actually for our postgraduates. So, sir is generous enough and said we will give financial assistance to the research worker. Okay. So, with a person of this nature uh, and I don't know how to describe. So, I am so fortunate to be associated with him to be in this era of Professor V. Seishaya. Thank you very much. I have been greatly honored by uh, offering me to give the uh, Dr. Professor V. Seishaya's oration. Okay? Right. Next, in this oration talk, actually I want to sensitize the obstetricians and the diabetologists that what happens in the preconception period. So, we were talking about the hyperglycemia and early pregnancy causing so many problems. So, this problem starts with the oocyte development, with the fertilization and the development of the zygote. So, my first half of the talk will be periconception and hyperglycemia. See, hyperglycemia of type 2 and uh, 1 DM, there are number of studies are being there. And whatever I am presenting is from the literature. So, many studies, they have examined the effect of hyperglycemia on the early embryo also. Even when glycemic control is stable during the first weeks of pregnancy, there is a significant risk of perinatal complications including fetal abnormalities. So, fertility complications could occur even prior to conception. So, animal experiments, they have shown that embryos from a diabetic mice are growth retarded, High levels of apoptosis are there, decrease in glucose uptake, oocytes are smaller, they are slower to com complete the meiotic maturation and altered mitochondrial distribution is there. The effect extends not only to the oocyte, to the 
humulus and granulose are cells surrounding the oocyte, where with increased apoptosis and decreased glucose uptake are seen. One of the primary mechanism is increased glucose metabolism involving hexosamine biosynthesis pathway through beta-O-linked glycosylation. Altered beta-O glycosylation is associated with a number of disease states including cancer, inflammatory conditions and neurogenerative degenerative diseases. It is also implicated as a primary mechanism behind the development of insulin resistance, pancreatic beta cell destruction in type 2 DM. Though the exact mechanism is not known, it is the altered beta O, uh, the glycoprotein B, uh, BHP. So what happens, See, we have talked about the animal experiment, what happens in the human beings in female reproduction, the concentration of glucose in the follicular fluid is similar to that of plasma, in fact it's slightly at a lower level. In IGT, pre-diabetes and obese patients and individuals with poor diet habits, they have increasing glucose levels in the follicular fluid. Maternal hyperglycemia is associated with poor consumption difficulty in maintaining the pregnancy and results in the delivery of the babies with health problem. Large for gestational age babies are increased risk of metabolic syndrome which all of us know and there is increased congenital anomalies and the fetal anomaly doubles when the fasting blood glucose is more than 6 millimole and it, it goes to 30 percent when the fasting blood glucose is 14.3 millimole. Neural tube defect, skeletal, cardiac malformations are 18 times more common in IDM. Hyperglycemic insult must occur. For this anomaly to occur, it should occur within the first six weeks of fertilization to produce the increased likelihood of congenital anomalies. So this picture shows you that it can affect all the systems in our body. See, at day 21 after the fertilization, Facial problems comes like cleft palate, etc. And uh, after day 21 of fertilization, hypospadiasis, obstructive urinary uh, problem, and 28 gastrointestinal, that is small left colon, and neurological problems on day 21, and cardiovascular problem day 21, and multi-system defects uh, day 29, that is a caudal regression syndrome, which is to be the 100% uh, specific for the uh, hyperglycemia. The earlier the glycemic control can be achieved, less risk for the malformation and this has been proved by the experiments where they have transferred the embryo within 24 hours of fertilization from a diabetic mother to a normal glycemic mother which resulted in the fetuses which are small, increased incidence of deficient neural tube closure, hydrocephaly and limb defects. The same embryo after 96 hours from a diabetic mother, that is at the blastocyst stage formation, if it is transferred, it results in the risk of resorption and miscarriage. So the, ex the effect of hyperglycemia extends to the preconception period as well. In human studies, even if glycemic control is achieved within the first few weeks of pregnancy, there remains 35 times higher risk of spontaneous abortion and congenital malformation if hyperglycemia is there in the periconception period. Frankie et al. has stated the optimal embryo development in, uh, is achieved using very low blood sugar concentration in animal experiments to the extent that the mouse only 18 milligram blood sugar and in buffaloes it is 5.6 millimole, nearly 105. So the periconceptional environment has a major impact on the developmental competence of the oocytes, embryo and fetal development. Hyperglycemic conditions during this time are detrimental to the subsequent embryo and fetal health. There is increased evidence of the fuel signaling the hexosamine biosynthesis pathway in mediating the effects of hyperglycemia in the periconceptional period and on the reproductive consequences. There are supposed to be four uh, pathways for the glucose metabolism and in this the HBP pathway is very important and so the mechanism by which hyperglycemia compromises the fertility or become clearer 
and or providing possible therapeutic targets. People who are interested in biochemistry, please take up this and try to prove or disprove what it is. So coming on to the preconceptional counseling in diabetes in pregnancy, this is a usual routine, everyone will be aware of it, I'll just rush through that. Overall societal burden is on the increase and uh, the type 1 and type 2 complicates 1 to 2 percent of all pregnancies and in the diabetic pregnancies 13 to 21 percent of the all diabetes complicating pregnancy, the remainder is GDM. When uh, women with diabetes in pregnancy have high rate of complications for themselves and their babies and perinatal mortality is four times higher and congenital anomalies three times greater. In all, the, all of them, the hyperglycemia is a primary cause for this. Studies shown that tight glycemic control in preconceptional period and during pregnancy is associated with improved outcome. Decide improved access and quality of the antenatal care. Now what we have, women with pre-GDM and their fetuses, they have increased risk of severe complications like neonatal death. That is because of improper utilization and lack of awareness among the medical personnel. Many of the complications of diabetes can be prevented by optimizing the maternal hyperglycemia in the preconception period. So, glycemic control is one of the most important aspects of the preconceptional counseling. What are the things in the preconceptional counseling? One is a history where you take the age and duration of the disease and presence of ketoacidosis and precipitating causes, hypoglycemia. Some people with hypoglycemia, they develop sheases also. So, in the history, you have to find out that presence of retinopathy, whether they have undergone any photocoagulation, proteinuria and nephropathy, hypertension, neuropathy, especially the great concern is the presence of gastroparesis during pregnancy and cardiovascular disease. Next is examination, the special being retinal examination, the lab test, hemoglobin A1c, thyroid, hemoglobin and uh, the renal function test, 24 hours urine protein, spot microalbumin to creatinine ratio and serum albumin. Preconceptional advice to the diabetic mother is, you have to explain the risk to the mother about the risk of pregnancy during uh, in, in the presence of diabetes and the what are the diabetic problems when she becomes pregnant that has to be explained and use of contraception until the good glycemic control has been established. This it has to be stressed very much because many a times we see people come with an unexpected pregnancy with a high hemoglobin A1c and anomalies and so on. So glycemic targets, glucose monitoring and medications of diabetes like insulin regime. A good example is the long-acting insulin if they are on and a good glycemic control is there, there is no need to stop that though there are no studies to prove the safety of this drug during pregnancy. So this is the same, uh, the long-acting insulin can be continued. So frequent contact with healthcare professionals, information about local arrangements for support and emergency contact number, all this has to be given to the patient. And next is the important thing is the diet and their weight and followed by the exercise. So the diet has to be individualized and when the BMA is more than 27 kg per square meter should be offered advice on how to lose weight and they are advised to take 5 milligram of folic acid until 12 weeks to reduce the risk of baby with a neural tube defect. Normally you know what we give is 0.5 milligram of folic acid. In diabetes you have to give 5 milligram. In preparation of the pregnancy, diet is very important one because it has to provide necessary micro and macronutrients, minimize the cholesterol, saturated fat and trans fat intact, prom promote the euglycemia and appropriate BMI, an appropriate diet to encourage the weight gain in underweight people and weight loss in overweight and obese individuals. Then appropriate daily distribution of dietary calories like 40 to 50 percent of the calories from carbohydrate, 15 to 20 percent from protein and the remainder from fat. Women should be encouraged to consume the carbohydrate as co complex carbohydrate and maintain the fiber intake as 28 grams by consuming whole grains, fruits and vegetables. Next is the glycemic target, which is the most important thing. Target blood glucose and the hemoglobin A1C level in the preconception period is, it has to be again individualized, especially in type 1 diabetic. And capillary plasma glucose target ranges 
as recommended for people with type 1 diabetes. We have to continue. That is normally we say the fasting should be less than 90 and post brandy less than 120. And the hemoglobin A1C should be less than 6.5. That will reduce the risk of malformation and they should be advised against pregnancy if their hemoglobin A1C level is about 10% because of the associated risk. After that, no, whether to continue or to do MTP, all those dilemmas should not come. So, advise strictly to avoid pregnancy. And monitoring blood glucose and ketones in the preconception period, women with the diabetes should be offered monthly hemoglobin A1C, offered a meter for self-monitoring of the blood glucose. And people who require the intensified hypoglycemic therapy, they should be advised to increase the frequency of self-monitoring of blood glucose to include fasting and the mixture of pre- and postprandial levels. And women with type 1 should be offered ketone testing strips to test for ketonuria whenever they are hyperglycemic or they feel unwell. And safety of the medications uh, regarding metformin as an adjunct or alternative to insulin in the preconception period and during pregnancy, it is safe when the likely benefits from improved glycemic control outweigh the potential for harm. Okay, so all other hypoglycemic agents should be discontinued. Though there were studies on the uh, glibenclamide, acarbose and all, it's not being recommended. So they have to stop all those the drugs and the rapid acting analogs, they are found to be safe during pregnancy. Retinal assessment in the preconception period. When women seeking the preconceptional counseling, she should be offered a retinal assessment in that first visit itself. If she did not have a ophthalmologic opinion six months before and when the disease that is a type 1 disease if it is more than 20 years 100 percent of type 1 and 60 percent of the type 2 they will have some form of retinopathy in the absence of effective treatment the proliferative retinopathy is associated with severe visual loss the important intervention is strict control of blood sugar and laser coagulation if the retinopathy is present, proliferative retinopathy is there. And generally, remember, the diabetic women, they do not suffer because of pregnancy, they will not develop any visual impairment. And coming on to the nephropathy and hypertension, diabetic nephropathy is a chronic disease. When there is a persistent albuminuria in the absence of infection, you call it as a diabetic nephropathy. It will cause a decrease in the creatine clearance development of hypertension and ultimately the renal failure, end-stage renal disease. So the lifetime risk of this complication can be minimized and delayed with the strict metabolic control and control of hypertension. Outside pregnancy, you know, we use uh, drugs like ACE and ARV blockers for the, uh, to avoid, to reduce the progression of the disease and they are contraindicated in pregnancy because of teratogenicity. Patients with nephropathy, when they have increased chance of preeclampsia, small for gestational age babies and increased perinatal mortality, so they should the BP should be controlled with the beta blockers. When they are planning for pregnancy, the BP should be controlled with beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and prophylactic low dose aspirin. No, it did not improve the perinatal outcome in them. And renal assessment is done by measuring the albuminuria before discontinuing the contraception. If creatinine is abnormal, that is the GFR is less than 45 ml and urinary albumin creatine ratio is greater than 30 mg, referral to a nephrologist should be considered before discontinuing the contraception. Congenital anomalies, I think enough I have said. Uh, see the time of the anomalies, ovulation, fertilization, take it as a zero day. On the day three after fertilization, caudal regression, spina bifida. So within a week time, all the anomalies occur. So intensified glycemic control during preconception and first trimester of pregnancy is important. Various studies have shown that preconceptional care and strict glycemic control, that is CVG between 60 to 130 milligram and low hemoglobin A1C in the first trimester, trimester lowers the congenital anomaly to 1.4% versus 10.5% in the control. So, achieving normal glycemia before and after conception reduces the rate of anomalies. Contraception. Diabetic women should plan their pregnancy in a good metabolic control to minimize the risk, of, risk for complications. All contraceptive methods available to the non-diabetic can be used. 
So the natural farm planning and barrier methods of say what the failure rate is high. Both copper and LNG IUCDs are equally safe and effective and modern low dose combined pills have negligible effect on the glucose control and atherogenic lipid profile in diabetic women with good metabolic control. ACBOG reserves the hormonal contraception for young diabetics less than 35 years without any complications. So, uh, Pedersen has analyzed actually uh, the uh, individuals with preconceptional counseling and without preconceptional counseling and his findings were without the preconceptional counseling there was 41.4 percent of preterm deliveries 7.3 percent of the babies with birth defects and 4.4 percent of the babies died in the infantile and neonatal period when there is associated preconceptional counseling there is improved pregnancy preparation and reduced risk of adverse pregnancy outcome decrease in a1c during first trimester decrease in the incidence of preterm delivery birth defect and perinatal mortality so the uh, preconceptional counseling should be in the form of a ladder when you make a diagnosis give a full information about the disease and start on medical management and when the, once the disease is established, highlight the importance of preconceptional care and contraception. Once the conception occurs, that is, uh, during preconception period itself, educate them, plan the metabolic control, give folic acid, and look for complications like nephropathy, hypertension, retinopathy, cardiovascular, neuropathy, and hyper, hypothyroidism. Counsel the patient about the impact of pregnancy on diabetes and diabetes on pregnancy. Treat the complications and have a concern when there is severe gastroparesis and coronary artery disease because both carries a very high mortality. CAD carries about 50% mortality. And when early pregnancy is there, metabolic control, folic acid administration and treat the complications. So a few words about the preconcept counseling in gestational diabetes. GDM has got an underlying insulin resistance. All of you know about, see, two-thirds of the patients who had GDM, they had a dysglycemia postpartum. So the disease signals an increased risk of maternal type 2 DM, childhood obesity and metabolic syndrome for the child. Up to 30% of women with GDM, they develop type 2 diabetes 5 to 10 years postpartum. Actually, even within two years, they develop. Uh, those have become normal and they develop within two years. BMA affect the risk of developing the postpartum diabetes after GDM. So the postpartum care of GDM women include screening for type 2 diabetes. Uh, now, as Geeta said, you know, we'll do it on the third postnatal day. And then two hour PP blood sugar more than 200, it indicates type 2 DM. If negative, do a OGCT every year. That is every birthday of the child, you do the OGTT or at least fasting PP blood sugar. So women should be aware that maintaining the BMI, healthy eating, exercise pattern that can delay the type 2 DM and minimize the risk for adverse outcome in future pregnancy. To summarize, the aim is to reduce the number of unintended pregnancies and maximize, maximize the health before conception to improve pregnancy outcome. A multidisciplinary approach is essential and pregnant <coughs> Preconceptional counseling is associated with improved pregnancy preparation and reduced risk of adverse pregnancy outcome in all types of hyperglycemia. And pre-pregnancy counseling is associated with significant reduction in A1C and lowest incidence of preterm delivery, birth defect, perinatal mortality for women with diabetes mellitus. So to conclude, there is no single medical or obstetric intervention that has been as important improving the outcome for diabetic women and their offspring has improved metabolic control. Thank you. Yes,